Hello to all of those joining. My name is Justin. I'm one of the founders of Artwork Archive. I want to thank everyone for taking the time to join us. Helping me is my colleague, Alyssian, um, who's here to protect me from any technological harm I may do myself. Uh, and many of you know us already, but, but there's a lot of people that are new that are joining today. So before I jump into today's topic, I want to take a second to just give a super quick rundown of who we are and what we do. So Artwork Archive is a platform that provides artists the tools they need to get organized, manage and grow their business, and showcase their work and who they are as an artist. And you know, if you've decided that being an artist is your career path, like it or not, you're an entrepreneur. And our mission is to help artists make a living doing what they love. So that's kind of what the company is all about, what we're all about. And then today we're kicking off this webinar series called Thrive with Artwork Archive. And this series is gonna highlight popular features, effective workflows within the Artwork Archive platform, as well as some best practices and tips for success. And so the goal here is that you come away from these short presentations with easy to execute strategies and tips to set your art business up for success. So today's topic is CRM, specifically what it is, the role it plays in driving your success, and how you can use Artwork Archive to build, strengthen, and manage those relationships. So first things first, we went, you know, defining this. A lot of people, when we sent this out, were asking, you know, what is a CRM? Um, so that's what we're going to jump into first. Um, and then, Alyssian, can you really quickly go over how the, the Q&A is going to work? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so... Um, at the bottom of your screen, um, you'll see a Q&A icon with two little comment um, boxes. Um, if you click on that, you can ask us questions throughout the webinar um, as they come up. And what we'll be doing is at the end, um, I will be pulling together all the questions and posing them to Justin. And so he'll get to as many as he can during the presentation. And again, we are recording this webinar and we'll be sending it out afterwards. So you'll have access to those Q&As and anything that we cannot get to. Um, if we don't get to your question, feel free to reach out to us directly at team, T-E-A-M, at artworkarchive.com. That's it. Justin, you may be talking, you're muted. <clears throat> and I see we already have a, a question already coming in. So thank you, Tatenda. Okay, sorry. And thank you for letting me know I was <laughs> muted. Um, so, yeah, we really encourage those questions. If we don't cover all of them here, we'll be sure to try to cover them afterwards in upcoming newsletters or in upcoming webinars um, on this Thrive topic. So let's start with what is a CRM? You know, when we sent this out, well, it's one of these acronyms that you may hear but not know specifically what it means. So I want to start with the definition. And CRM is really an acronym that stands for Customer Relationship Management. And customer relationship management is really any tool, strategy, or process that helps you better organize, access, and manage customer data. And while our main focus in this webinar is going to be on customer relationships, I want to make it clear that this really pertains to all contact types. As your relationship with a gallery manager, other artists, advisors, a framer, or anyone else you work with in a professional capacity are equally important to the success of your business as an artist. Um, you know, now that we've gotten that out of the way, I, I wanna talk about the role we see CRM playing in the success of artists. So, you know, we're lucky to work with artists of all ages and stages in over 130 countries. And one of the themes we've observed um, with the most successful of these artists is just how much importance they place on these relationships. So I, I'm going to be using, you know, this presentation and jumping in and out of the platform. So, you know, pardon me if this looks um, a little chaotic, but right now I'm jumping into Artwork Archive itself because before we go into these specifics, I want to jump over some of just the basics of contact management or customer relations management in Artwork Archive. So 
Those of you familiar with this, this is going to look very familiar to you. Those of you who are seeing it for the first time, you know, we've got a lot of online tours available that you can see a tour of the rest of the system. For, for right now, we're going to be focusing on this contacts tab over here. So this is the heart of our CRM. This is where you're managing all of your, you know, fellow artists, framers, shippers, clients, et cetera. And when you want to enter a new contact, that really can happen in two ways. You can either click a new contact and enter all the critical information about that contact, or the system is a relational database. So when you're doing things like selling to a particular customer or taking particular actions, it's going to create that client automatically for you, as well as showing you whatever that relationship was. So for example, a sale or et cetera, you know, or something like that. I can jump into any of my, um, you know, uh, contacts and add things like reminders. I can use the system to share private rooms directly with this particular contact or reports or presentations. And any activity I take with this particular client, you're going to see an activity log that shows me what I've done, what I've shared when, and that can be really helpful. Similarly, when it comes to reminders, if I were to add a reminder, so let's say this is someone that I'm preparing a commission for, I can sit here, add a reminder for, let's say, next week, follow up with this person about commission X. And when I save that, the great thing here is this kind of does the thinking so you don't have to. It's going to set that up as an appointment that you can sync with your phone, your calendar, and it will also send you an email the beginning of that week to make sure you don't forget anything you have scheduled for that week. And just as a quick aside, our schedule feature not only works for individual clients, but you can create general reminders for everything. And the system will automatically create reminders and other helpful hints on deadlines and submission dates for things like exhibitions, loans, when you're supposed to pick something up from a gallery or another place you're selling your work for. It automates all of those and generates custom reminders for you that get sent to you or you can sync with your own uh, information. We even have some kind of older school features here that we've seen used to great success with being able to filter. And let's say I want to see all my um, VIP clients, let's say, or VIP collectors. I can filter by that group and then generate address labels to send traditional mailing lists. I can even use that same concept to filter by a particular group or individual and create private viewing rooms. So let's say I have a show coming up that I want to give someone exclusive access to before it's out there in the gallery or out there in kind of exhibition form. I can do that introduction and share it directly with, you'll see, you know, an individual in my contact group, a smaller group, or an email to someone that I recently met. So now I want to back up and talk specifically about kind of the three tiers where we feel the CRM will help you most in your own career as an artist. So let's start with first or start first with building relationships with new customers. Whether it's via social media, an art event, or your own website, there's going to be countless opportunities to grow your customer base. And our aim is to provide an easy to use platform to gather and track all of that information so you can use it to make smart decisions about how to translate those relationships in the future into sales. So let's use an example here. So let's say you're at an art fair or an opening or something and you meet someone. What you, you can get caught up in the moment and forget about that person's information or you can take the time and make a quick note. So here's an example of someone I met, you know, at a recent show. I can put this information in and not only will I have her contact information, but I can have the context that I can refer to later. And I oftentimes will refer back to this context because if I'm meeting multiple people in a night, I can be scribbling down notes, but then I really want to take the time to get it into the system so I can refer to it later and remember the context in which I met this person, or maybe a key thing they said, or if it's a show I'm having and they see a particular work of art that they really like, I can jot that down too and follow up specifically with a professional presentation on that art or any you know, follow-up questions they may have. So this is a great example of 
using the system to record a meeting or any information about people you encounter along the way and kind of move them through the pipeline. And if I wanted to with this particular client, you can see I've created a group called potential buyers. So everyone's gonna do this differently and everyone's gonna use the group function differently. But what we typically see done is people use the groups, not only to identify the contact type, but also to kind of create their own pipeline. So in this particular case, this is someone that was potentially interested in purchasing some of my work. So they're in the potential buyers group. In the future, if they end up purchasing something for me, they can become one of my collectors and shift into that group. And if they turn out to be someone that's purchasing a great deal for me in the future, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe I move them up into the VIP collector where I'm giving them sneak peeks and where I'm really marketing directly to them because I know that so much of my business is going to come from those repeat sales. So just to summarize this aspect of, of, of the platform, you know, it really allows you to jot down these key details, which can help you connect in the future and maybe even follow up so you can advance the relationship. And by doing it in the system and taking the time to put this information in, it makes it easy to identify them, follow up on previous conversations, share information about yourself and your work, and methods that can help you build relationships with them. So now let's jump into strengthening relationships with your current customers. I think a lot of people take this for granted, but finding new customers can be significantly more time consuming and expensive than keeping the customers you already have. And while you're continuing to grow your customer base, or while continuing to grow your customer base is definitely important for ongoing growth, we have really found that strengthening relationships with your clients is one of the critical success drivers. So let's go to an existing client here. So as I mentioned before, you can see kind of notes from past conversations and, and, and you know, this is a situation where, you know, we met her at a local art fair. Um, you can see recently shared documents. I can set up reminders and I have all their contact information. And this can include things like their social links, their spouse, their, you know, their birthdays, any relevant information that you feel will help you better connect with that person in the future, the system will enable you to record. The other thing that I mentioned before is everything in Artwork Archive is relational, meaning that when I sold Antoinette work and I recorded this sale, it automatically was logged, not just at the artwork level, but also at the client level. So when I'm looking at this particular contact, I can see what she bought, when she bought it, what she paid. Maybe she asked me for a copy of an invoice. You know, I can quickly send that out to her. Maybe she had a question about the particular sales related details. Um, you know, perhaps I did a commission for this person and I wanted to record the contract itself and associate it with this particular contact. That's another really powerful thing you can do in the system is associate specific documents, contracts, et cetera, with that particular individual. And the advantage to something like that is not only can you refer to it later, but you can also very easily share it directly with them. Um, one other thing I wanna point out here, uh, let me back up, is this, um, you'll, you'll see this little activity log. I can see activity with each individual client and then I can even go to things like my private rooms and say, you know, I wonder if I shared, you know, I've got this introduction to my new series. Did I share that with so-and-so? And I can see who I've shared that with. Similarly, on all the reports I can generate within the system, whether it be presentations, um, price lists, uh, gallery reports, and things like that, you can always see who you shared with, when you shared it, Etc. And that's a really handy tool for reference in the future. So this, you know, to summarize this part, the strengthening relationships, you know, our, our goal is to make it easy to track those important details about clients, like the detailed contact information, past communications, who bought what when, and other ways to categorize them in specific targeted groups. And that empowers you with the information you need to keep your existing customers feeling appreciated so you can drive more sales. Lastly, before we get into questions, I want to talk about how you can basically use CRMs to work smarter. And, and before I jump into this, you can use 
any CRM system. Most CRM systems can capture this information. The difference between a standalone CRM system and an integrated CRM system is when you're dealing with a standalone, you've got the contact information and maybe even some of the past communications history. What you don't have is the ability to view things in context, see the relationships. You know, if I use this framer and they've shipped things for me, what did they ship? When did they ship it? If I've got a contact at a particular gallery, who's my main contact? What's that relationship like? Tell me more about what I have at that particular gallery, because in addition to the contact management, we also have a full location management system that can show you where any of your given works are at a, at a time, which locations are selling most for you, et cetera. You know, and going back to things like private rooms, it's really nice to be able to curate these private rooms that you can give you know, this digital viewing experience for individual clients or smaller groups um, can be a real advantage as can be being able to do these custom reports to get the information you wish in front of clients. And we even have advanced reports like the inventory report that not only include informa information you know, in you know, thumbnail format or with the details of the work you're trying to share, but you can also customize this with your own letterhead. And for those of you who work with galleries or other third parties, you can even leverage those to send the high resolution versions of your images really easily. So you don't have to do that in a separate program like email where it might be harder to get those larger format attachments in. So I think Alyssian, rather than me continuing to drone on, um, I think it might be fun to take some questions to start getting some specifics on what people are looking for, what they'd like to learn more about on the topic of CRM. You know, I think I've kind of beat the dead horse here with the fact that it is one of the most important tactics that we see as keys to success in the artists we see doing the most business. They tend to spend an inordinate amount of time really focusing on building new relationships, strengthening existing relationships, and that takes time. So they're leveraging all these time saving features to make the time to continue building upon those relationships and moving them you know, along the, uh, the, you know, their proverbial pipeline. Great, and a lot of questions are, are coming in um, throughout your presentation, Justin, which was great. Um, and it looks like there's more coming in as well. So we'll try to get to as many as possible. Um, let's see, so Justin, are you ready for me to, to ask some questions? Great. <laughs> First question, is there a way to bulk add contacts or tools like templates to make it easier um, to get the contact information into the artwork archive. Account. Sure, sure. We we run into this all the time, and this is this is as true for data and images as it is for contacts. Um, we know a lot of people are transitioning from other systems. Uh, the last thing we want to do is have someone spend a, a ton of time getting information they already have somewhere into our systems. So we have an import service both for data, say you're coming from uh, another management system or have information in a spreadsheet, and we have information or we have a template for getting contacts in the system. Say if you have something like you know Mailchimp or Google Contacts or some other platform you've used, we've got an easy to use import template that can help get those over in bulk. We also have that same ability, you know, as I mentioned. You can use your contact list for things like address labels, but you can also use it to export and import into things like MailChimp or Constant Contact or whatever program you use for newsletter management um, or, or broader marketing efforts. Great, great. And I think that answers, I'm just looking through the, the list of questions. Mercedes, you asked if, uh, if you have your contacts in Excel, can you add it to Artwork Archive? So the answer is indeed yes, uh, through that import. So thank you for the questions on that. Um, another great question, does your contact have to have an account on Artwork Archive to no. be able to see a private room? Yeah, no, not, not at all. We want to make this as frictionless as possible. And you're going to find this is true for the public profile, private rooms, reports, there is absolutely no barrier of entry on the other end of that because we know that not all contacts out there are going to have 
artwork archive account. So when I'm sharing this private room, when I hit the share button, I can share with anybody's email I want or an existing, th this feature here exists just to make it easier because you're typically sharing these things with people that are already in your contact list. But oftentimes I'll create a quick room, share it with someone I've just met that I may not have had the time to enter their full contact information mm -hmm. and it goes out to them. There's no download required, no anything required. They are just brought to that particular room that you can once again, custom tailor at the top to kind of your look and feel, have a custom note here, and then they can dynamically explore the work that you've chosen to share with them. Great, great. Um, let's see. Uh, does Artwork Archive by any chance have a template for a commission contract? Gosh, that's a great question. You know, we get that. <laughs> We get that a lot and, and we've attempted it in the past and we've got a lot of legal um, kind of in-house legal expertise as well as people we've tapped for that. And the challenge we found is no, the, while a lot of commissions have similar elements, we haven't found a one size fits all document for that that really would work for everyone. So we've got some best practices and a lot of advice on how to construct those on our blog, but we don't have a template for things like that. What we do have templates for are things that are a little bit more standardized and structured. So if I am going to consign work to, let's say, White Cube, I can very easily generate a consignment report and then add some of my own um, you know, custom information to it if I want to. Similarly, if I've got a work of art and the customer is requesting I generate a certificate of authenticity to include along with the sale, we have templates for a lot of things that are a little bit more standardized, but commissions just happen to be one of those things that are a little trickier and don't necessarily have a one size fits all. So to that person who asked that or people that asked that, I would recommend checking out our blog and doing a search for that because we're often adding information on better, um, you know, best practices in legal documentation and I suspect that one of the upcoming thrives is going to be exclusively dedicated to the topic of, you know, legal documentation, document storage, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, even delving into things like how to best store and present yourself or store your professional documentation and present yourself as an, as an artist, because this system also has the ability to store your CV, bio, statements, et cetera, to make those easy to share as well in case you're preparing for uh, an exhibition submission, a grant, a residency, et cetera. Yeah, and um, that's great. And one of the reasons why I brought that up, uh, that question up is um, for you all to know, you can also upvote um, questions that are being asked in the Q&A. So if someone asks a question that you are also interested in um, by clicking the, the thumbs up, um, you know, you're, you're saying, I would like to know the answer as well. So that one was a popular one. And Justin, that's a really great point about, you know, not everything being a one size fits all. Um, to take a step away from product feature specific things, um, great question about what kind of strategies would you suggest, Justin, for staying in contact with a collector or a curator that doesn't come off as pushy or bothersome? Okay. So I'm going to say this and I'm going to see my team smiling behind the scenes of this because they know that this is so hard for me to do because I'm always worried about, are we emailing too much? Is this being <laughs> too forward? Um, I can tell you from past experience and watching this, you know, happen for, for the last decade that you're always going to be um, more conservative than people have an openness for. So if I take my hat, my artwork archive hat off and talk, you know, put on my Justin, the, the collector hat. If I love your work and I'm interested in you as an artist, you can't spam me enough. I want to see all your things. I am perfectly capable of deleting something out of my inbox if it's too much or responding or unsubscribing. Um, but, but typically those artists who I do subscribe to or who are reaching out, I really appreciate it because it's very easy to get busy day to day. It's very easy to get caught up in other things. And when I'm mired in work emails and something, something like that, sometimes the highlight of my day is seeing an, an artist I know from the past that I haven't heard from in years is working on a new series or you know, an artist I really liked but hadn't paid attention to in a while hits me with an email that even if they're sending it out to their general masses, 
it draws me back in. So I would say, don't, you know, don't, don't let uh, kind of perfection get in the way of progress on that. Don't worry about any kind of artificial cadence or, or any best practice on that. I would say if you've got something that you believe is relevant and interesting to the audience, put it out there and it's probably going to get a good reception. Great. Um... I love uh, I love how you bring bring us here at our work archive into the picture because yeah indeed we don't want to be um, overbearing in our outreach and hopefully you all are appreciating what we are sending you. Um, I just want to call out there's been a few questions about how to access this contact import uh, to where to send it. Um, so just to clarify, so the contact import is done through an import spreadsheet template. Uh, so if you would like to utilize the contact import and it is part of your plan, then you can contact us directly at team at artworkarchive.com or within the chat. Um, when you log into your Artwork Archive account, you'll see a little turquoise chat box in the bottom right hand corner um, and ask us for that spreadsheet and we can help you set that up. Um, okay, uh, for our international folks, a really great question. Justin, how do we protect um, the artist client's contact information. Is it up to par with UK GDPR? With GDPR, yes, it is. <laughs> you know, we, security is one of those things we, we kind of live and die by and protecting personally identifiable information as well as client data is absolutely critical. Um, a, a lot of you know this, um, many of you don't. We, we actually have three versions of Artwork Archive. So we have the artist version, the collector version, and then an institutional version. And the institutional version is used by a lot of financial firms, medical mm -hmm. institutions, et cetera. Um, so all of the security protocols that we use for those you know, super complex accounts all spill over to the artist accounts as well. So everyone benefits from it. Not only do we encrypt traffic to and from the site, but we also do encryption at rest. And you can always check out our terms and privacy if you'd like to hear a little bit more about, you know, GDPR specific stuff for those in other countries, particularly Europe. Um, but all applies, you know, we have the internal security officer that, um, you know, we have as a single point of contact for that. And we also engage third party firms to do, you know, penetration tests and things like that to make sure our security is always up to par. Yeah, really. I'm really glad we could uh, address that because uh, Laura said that's great to hear because she's been reluctant to use the contact feature fully because of her concerns for privacy. So glad we can clarify that. Um, another thing to clarify, the contact import, again, um, it's available for those on the master plan. Uh, so if you would like access to that and you're currently on apprentice or professional, um, please let us know um, and we can direct you to how to um, upgrade to the master plan to have access to that if it is of interest. The other thing to note, um, a question about, will this Q&A be part of the recording? Yes. Um, and so, you know, we have a, we actually um, backloaded the presentation for Q&As uh, so that we could get into uh, your specific questions because um, it seems like they're all universal and people are asking. I, so I think that's going to be a theme with Thrive in general is, I, you know, I want to do as little droning on as possible. I, I want to get to the questions because that's usually where we tease out some of the most interesting and, and relevant information. Um, you know, as we jump into more topics with this, these webinars in the future, um, we will fixate on specific feature sets within the program to make sure you guys are getting the most out of it because I can't tell you how often we run into situations where people don't know that something even exists in the system. Private rooms is one of those things a lot of people didn't even know existed. Um, you know, the, the document storage, the ease of which you can share with external contacts and, you know, income. We're releasing things so frequently that even though we try to do a good job at communicating out to everyone, um, it, it's, it's easy for that stuff to get missed. And, and know that 90% of our ongoing evolution comes from requests from our users and direct interaction from our users. So never hesitate to reach out if there's a feature you're interested in or you have a specific question, because that's really what drives innovation and make sure we keep turning out something that's custom tailored to suit your needs. Great. And with that, um, a lot of people are asking about integrations with Squarespace, Wix, Shopify, um, Square. 
Um, and then specifically, you know, any way for the information to automatically populate during a sale. So let me space those out, Alyssa, mm -hmm. and don't let me forget the populate during a sale. Great. Um, actually, I'm going to take the easy one first, and then we'll go backwards. So we're going to take the populate during the sale. So if I already have a contact in my system and I go to register this sale, I can immediately have that person's uh, contact details. So if I sell to Antoinette, this is already pre-populated and it's going to save me having to take the time to create the new contact and all that information. Then all I'm entering is the specifics of that particular artwork sale. And as a bonus, if I'm selling this through a third party, I can also track that detail because, you know, personally, I like to know which outlets are the most performant for me. Um, that doesn't always apply to everyone. Some people sell direct, but for those of you who sell through other places, you have the ability to track that as well. So yes, that information can pre-populate. Once you do that, if you notice, if I look back at any of the works that are sold in this, I can see right on that piece's record who it's sold to, the details. I can even jump back in and edit this invoice or jump into the invoice and see, has this been paid? Is it pending? How was it paid? When was it paid, et cetera? Okay, so the integration side of things. Uh, without muddying the waters, um, the short answer is this. Yes, we can integrate, and you, you basically can embed your entire portfolio, certain co like individual collections, or here, let me look at it. I'll, I'll show you in context because I think that um, looks better. So this is a public profile. If you choose to activate your public profile, a couple things happen. One is you become part of our discovery platform, which is used by collectors, interior designers, architects, collectors of all types around the world to, to source art. Um, you also can connect it directly to your website, your social channels. So this is just a great SEO boost in general. And what you can do is you can use this to embed your entire portfolio over here on the right or specific collections. So let me show you, I hope my buddy does not mind this, but I just talked to him the other day. So here is an artist out of Chicago named Sergio Gomez. And Sergio, it looks like has a, I'm gonna guess this is a WordPress. So he has chosen, so this is his look and feel, his style, his URL, and he has chosen to directly embed his paintings and drawings collection on his own website. So when I go to this, it's actually pulling this from Artwork Archive and avoiding double entry. So that's just one big time saver to only have to update your inventory in one spot. And you can completely choose, if you look at the public pieces setting, which works I want to make public or private, which collections I want to make public or private, how to group works. Um, you can choose which information to share. Maybe you want to hide prices. Um, maybe no one cares about your inventory numbers, so you can shut that off. So you have a lot of variety in what you can toggle on and off. Someone asked about the Shopify question. We do not currently directly integrate with any e-commerce platform. Um, and, and that's largely because we have our own way of selling on the site that doesn't require um, something like Shopify or WooCommerce or anything like that. So most of the artists that are looking for an e-commerce solution or, or the ability to sell and create digital, digital invoices are, are just activating that function on their own Artwork Archive account and using that website, using their websites to just have their own personal look and feel rather than relying on kind of a one size fits all template. Wow, great. Um, sorry, I just had to take a moment to unmute myself. Um, I think this is a good time to, there's been a lot of questions about the differences in plans, what is available, the pricing, um, you know, because this is about Artwork Archive, I think it would be relevant, Justin, if we went to our pricing page. Sure. Uh, and just called out the differences. I, I, I'm more than happy to do that. And, and I think what I'd love is just because of the topic is focused on CRM, um, 
if I'd like to cherry pick as many CRM related questions as we can. Um, and then we can kind of encourage everyone to either reach out directly about pricing. Uh, the Artwork Archive basically has three tiers. So it's got the apprentice tier, the professional tier, and the master tier. And there's, there's a bit of feature difference. You know, apprentices typically for those that are just getting started out, the professional version, you know, mid-career, you, you'll see here that pieces and locations are one of the, the differentiating factors. Um, but there's also some features that exist in some of the tiers that don't. So anybody who wants more information on this can access us at artworkarchive.com forward slash pricing. Two other notes that I want to just cover while I'm here. Um, one is once you lock in a price with Artwork Archive, so let's say you've locked in this price, it never changes. We have people that are paying, that signed up 10 years ago that are paying the same thing they signed up for 10 years ago and have access to all the great features. There's no kind of bait and switch. We don't, there, there's nothing to download. When we release new features, they get seamlessly woven into the product. The other thing, as you will note, there is a little notice here. For the first time in five years, I think, we are going to be raising our prices starting, oh, let's see, is it next week or October 1st? Friday. Oh, mm -hmm. Friday, uh, as it says right Fire. here. And I'm just not <laughs> it in front of my face. October so 2. on Friday. So that's the first time in five years we've done that. Anybody who's interested in locking in the current rates, as long as you sign up for a free trial before um, Friday, you're fine. The, you'll still have access to the existing rates. And then, you know, moving forward, we are bumping it up slightly. Um, so, but as I mentioned, once you lock in a price, you're locked in for life. If you want information on the pricing, you can go to artworkarchive.com forward slash pricing. We always are really transparent about mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, list any other CRM related? Yeah, I, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, um, Combining a few questions together because sure. um, people are asking if Artwork Archive has an app. People are asking about um, if it's possible to record new contacts on site at shows, yes. art fairs, and such. Um, and if there's any best practices around collecting that information, you know, real time. Yeah. Okay. So the app question we have chosen very kind of purposefully to have what's called a responsive platform. Um, so 90 plus percent of our users access Artwork Archive on a mobile device. And as a result of that, we wanted to make sure that this could be accessible anywhere on any device. So what this looks like on my desktop or laptop is going to be similar to what you see when you access it on a browser on a mobile device. But what will happen is, let's say you access this on an iPhone, when you create a new piece, instead of me clicking this and having it looking on my hard drive, it's going to go to iPhoto. These menus will be a little bit more collapsed. So someone asked about, well, what do I do on site? I usually just have my phone in my pocket logged in and I can click contacts, really quickly go in there and make a note on my mobile device, hit update and I'm done. And then if I want to do more specifics or things like that, I can go in and do it more thoughtfully when I'm sitting down at my computer or something like that. But when I'm on the fly and I'm making information on site, or let's say you're, you know, at a booth in an art fair or something like that, when you have those breaks, you can quickly just jump in and enter that information. Or most of the time when you're having a conversation with someone, you know, I certainly don't mind if uh, an artist is asking me, like if I'm willing to give them my information, I wanna hear from them. So I don't find it an inconvenience at all when someone is looking, you know, asking me those questions and clearly making a notation of it, whether it be scribbling it on a piece of paper or adding it directly into the system. Hmm. Another great question um, about uh, contacts. Mm -hmm. Is there some way to create group emails with your contacts similar to MailChimp or other emailing tools? So yes, um, when you create groups. So I wanna make sure that I, I'm super clear on this. The, we adore MailChimp um, and, and, and sites like it because they, they really focus specifically on being the best at what they do, which is that kind of mass market newsletter thing. Um, we never aspire to be that because so many of our clients already have accounts with them. 
um, we try to facilitate, you know, sharing the contacts between the two. Um, but we don't do those kind of like mass market newsletters. That said, we also know that sometimes when you're sharing information about an opening, a presentation, maybe just an image of a new work you're working on, that you're gonna wanna send that to a group of people. So as you create your groups and you can create groups of whatever you want. So let's say I've got these VIP collectors, you will notice that with all of our share function, let me just hop into a private room. When I click that share, it is going to actually send individual emails. So if I were to choose VIP collectors, it's going to send this private room information to each of those individuals. So it'll look like a direct email specifically from me rather than a blind CC to you know, a big massive group. It'll look like a personal email coming from me. That is not only true for private rooms, but it's also true for all of our presentations and such as you see, in this drop down, when I click share, it's using that same feature set to get it out to an individual contact, a group, or an email I may have. Great, and I'm, I'm glad that you brought up, um, you know, the the fact that Mailchimp and others are are the experts within their their newsletter space and their mailing outs because there have been a few questions about, you know, does Artwork Archive have any intent in being able to send out newsletters directly from uh, the platform? Um, Gosh, we've, we've debated it. It's, it's one of those situations that's very similar to websites for us. Um, we've, we've debated over the years and, and had so much kind of push to consider creating templated websites for our artists. I, I think where we stand on that is we want to be really great at the things that are our main focus and let, you know, when there's situations like in the newsletter space where there are products like MailChimp out there, um, we'd rather facilitate that kind of um, ease of use with that other platform and let them do what they do because they have really spent years, you know, dialing in those specific metrics and all like managing all the can spam laws and all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, it's and, and you know, on the website topic, we, we've, we've gone down the path. We do have a lot of people that actually use our public profile as their own website. I, I personally don't necessarily advocate for that because I do think your website is yet another way for you to really, you know, establish and express who you are as an individual. And I think templated sites make that a little more challenged. You know, those kind of one size fits all or limited templated sites tend to all look the same. And I do think, that, which doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just, I like the idea of having uh, an easier way to express truly who you are and your mm -hmm. look and feel which is why instead of trying to reinvent the wheel and, and going head to head with someone like Squarespace or WordPress or Wix, we really facilitate the integration and save you the double entry to really streamline that process. Great. Um, I just, again, uh, a moment of clarification. Um, one uh, webinar attendee said that they still, uh, they don't know whether the CRM is available on the professional plan. Um, CRM contact management is available on all plans. On all the plans. All plans, uh, apprentice, professional, master, you have this contact record tool. You have the ability to create private rooms and share them out. The ability to create, create and generate um, and share out the reports. Uh, so yeah, so this this functionality and these best practices and the benefits that Justin is speaking to are, is available to everyone who has an Artwork Archive account. Right, yeah, the co contact, man, no matter what age or stage you are in your career, we believe so strongly that a, a CRM system or, you know, contact or customer relations management in general is so critical to success that we wanted to make sure that all all platforms had that yeah and um a question that came in that is is perfect is the reason why we wanted to do this thrive series and, and thank you again to everyone joining us for this inaugural this first uh thrive webinar series uh justin how can um artists share their inventory with high res images directly to galleries okay so there is, I, there's a couple ways to do it, but I'm gonna give you my favorite way to do it. The most common way to do this, so let's say I have a gallery and I'm saying, hey, I wanna see the information about the works you're sharing me, but I also need access to those high res images because I'm gonna be or printing out a catalog. So it's gonna be really helpful. 
Email is a very difficult way to do that because if you're having high res versions of those images, certain email clients have specific size limits and constraints. So what we have and what we recommend for that is our inventory report. Because one of the things a lot of people don't know is if I'm doing, let's say, um, works for gallery X, not only do I have all this ability to choose what information I want to set, share with that gallery or third party, but I can also click this right here. And if I click this button, it is going to actually embed the direct download links to those original image files. Um, so it's really handy because that gallery gets a really professional looking report with a thumbnail with the information that they need to do whatever catalog or printout or tear sheet they're going to do, as well as the links to the direct images that you can send digitally without them having to worry about it going via email or not all of them coming through or which image matches which piece because this directly matches them to it. Now, one note that's pretty exciting to announce is that we're gonna be adding some new features to the private room feature a lot of you have asked for the ability to not only be able to share these images with you know, people that may be interested, but to also give them the ability to download the high resolution versions via the private room. So that's something we're working at now or working on now and should be out in the upcoming release. Great. Um, Justin, can you show everyone how they can export their contact records? There's a few questions about being able to, to download the information. Sure. So we really believe firmly in having people use the system because they genuinely get value, not because they feel trapped. So I'll jump into the contacts version of this, but I wanna show the pieces thing first. You can export the entirety of your information at any time with the click of a button. Um, this one is specific to your data and can be done in a Excel spreadsheet or a common spreadsheet format. And similarly with the contacts, when you do a new report, you can do these address labels or a specific contact report, but you can also export them to CSV in a row and table structure that can be imported into most common, con you know, whether you're transitioning to another system or importing this into MailChimp or whatever, um, that makes it really easy to do. Uh, keep in mind also that if you only wanted to export a subset of this, whatever you're filtering here so let's just say i just want to export my client list if i did that it's just going to export the data on my clients great i'm just we have a lot of great questions <laughs> and i'm trying to um uh sift we can start doing there. lightning rounds i know <laughs> Um, okay, so this is a long question, but um, it's a great use case. Um, so everyone, uh, be patient with me as I as I read through and tee this up to Justin. Um, so Marcia Crumley asked, and a lot of people upvoted for, can I tie a contact to a specific painting if they haven't purchased it? Let's say a customer expresses an interest in a specific painting, but it's sold. I want to remember who that contact was when I finish a similar painting that they might be interested in. How do I do this? And will the listing for the painting itself show who that person was or how do I find them? So Great. listen, read the, the in the beginning part of that. Are they looking to reserve it for an individual or are they looking? So the use case right here is um, someone is interested in a painting that has already been sold. So it's no longer, ah. uh, but they want to keep track of, you know, me, Elysian, I'm really interested in seascapes. Um, but unfortunately, um, you know, Marsha's new seascape just sold. Um, how does she keep track gotcha. of the fact that I like God, that's an awesome that's an awesome question um so when when you were originally reading the question I thought it was you know can I reserve certain works for people that can you tie certain things to people or can you set it in you know reserve status which which the answer is yes and we've got a, a dedicated feature for that um what you are talking about is really interesting and and something that I'm going to talk with the team in depth um afterwards, I, I think this is how I would do it now. So the short answer is we do not have a specific way to say Madeline was interested in specific work that, that she didn't buy. What we do have and what I have seen a lot of artists do is use the groups feature to focus on themes. So great example, um, 
you know, John, my business partner's mother, he actually created Artwork Archive for his mother, who's an oil painter out of Colorado Springs, um, has done a lot of work on, like she's done a lot of paintings that have horses or Native Americans or things like that in them. When she has clients that are interested in those specific things, she creates groups for those so that she can easily reference those later. So if I know someone is really into seascapes, I can go to my, you know, uh, seascape group. I can't type. I can go to my seascape <laughs> group later and reference that and see all the people who have expressed interest in seascape groups. But you bringing this up has kind of gotten my head going. I will talk with the team about potential ideas surrounding being able to add certain interest areas and works of interest directly to the contact. Because what we're talking about right now with private rooms is creating this concept of favoriting. So let's say I happen to share someone a private room and I'm the client looking at this and I see this is sold, I still want to be able to favorite it so that this artist knows that I love that. And if they do anything else in the future like that, I, you know, I, I want that on their radar. So we are talking about adding this concept of favoriting to the private room feature, but we'll also think about better ways we can handle that as well. That's a great question. Thanks. Yeah, you're, you're getting a lot of claps for that. <laughs> okay, we have, we have five minutes left. Um, so we'll take about one or two um, questions depending on how long it takes. And, and by the way, disclaimer, we're, we're not going anywhere. So we, we have five minutes left in this, but obviously, you know, we, we have a, a, a chat and email and are, are happy to field questions offline as well. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm just putting this here so we don't forget, Justin, before we sign off on the webinar, it would be great to show everyone, you know, how they can further learn. So blog, help docs, and our YouTube channel. But before we get to that, um, maybe this can be the, the last question um, before we show all these great helpful tutorials that people can access. Um, Laura Hunt would love to create a report for all collectors with not only the pieces they have purchased, but also the total dollar amounts. Uh, can you show how she can do yeah. that currently with an inventory? Yeah, sure. And so we've got this, well, there's a couple different ways to do that. I, you can look at it from the piece view. And by the way, if you're more visually oriented, you know, maybe you want to use the gallery view. If you're looking in more kind of a like spreadsheet mentality, like it sounds like this case would be, I can actually do a quick view of every single thing a particular client has bought for me and show it in my main artwork screen. But when you want to get into specific dollars and cents, you've really got a lot of power there as well. Because for the certainly the pro and the master versions, we have full income, revenue, and expense tracking. So for this type of thing, I can quickly see everything Antoinette's bought, total up the dollar amount, do Excel reports on that. You can get in here and do the same thing with your expenses. Uh, maybe you are an artist that's taken to teaching and you want to see, you know, all of your, you know, teaching revenue. Um, the, you can get really granular here. And if you just want to get everything for a particular date range, so let's say I want to see everything I did in 2020, um, I can simply put those dates in create a new report and it's going to give me the breakdown of every single thing I did, not just in a PDF report, but I can also do spreadsheets for those of you who like to get a little nerdier with data. Great. And um, before you get into the showing where the help docs are um, in our YouTube channel, um, a lot of questions about, you know, how to import contacts into Artwork Archive uh, to break down the process. Um, we have a contact import spreadsheet, you know, it has column, first name, last name, etc. Um, if you would like to utilize this import, please contact us either, either via the chat box in the lower right hand corner, turquoise, or contact us at team at artworkarchive.com. Uh, please uh, let us know that you would like the spreadsheet. We'll send it to you along with some tips for how to complete it. Uh, you will copy and paste all of your data into it, send it back to us. And then we will import it into the account for you as long as you are on the master plan. Justin, did I do that justice? Yeah, I, you did. I would also add the, the um, if you already have contacts in the system and you're, and you're wanting to use the upload, just make sure that they're written the same way. Because so for example, if Madeline, if you have it you know, in the system as B-L-A-I-S 
and in the spreadsheet it's BLAS, it's going to create a, a duplicate record. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, we probably have time for one more question and then you tell me where it's screen you want me to have up a listen. Yeah, sure thing. Um, um, or, or, you know, I'm, I'm just looking, we've got, we've got two minutes left. I, I well, think, I, I think I called all the, the very, um, oh, here's, here's a great one to, to end on. Do we have galleries or dealers using artwork archive to this CRM relationship? A ton. Yeah. A ton. <laughs> I mean, the, the, our whole other side of the business. So the, we have an organization version that's used by dealers, art consultants, mm -hmm. advisory firms, galleries, um, uh, and, and in even individual collectors and estates that sell art or university museums that mm -hmm. sell art um, because CRM for them, you know, for an institution like uh, a university, it may be the donors that they care most about tracking for a gallery. They're every bit as interested in maintaining those client relationships as you all are as it's, you know, their, their lifeblood for future sales. Great. All right. And to, to just send off with, um, you know, help docs and then um, our YouTube channel uh, okay. would be two great resources um, and perhaps the blog actually too. Okay. So um, this in the upper right hand corner, this little chat question mark is a great way to kind of find anything you're looking for. So let's say, you know, I remember Justin saying something about an inventory report, you know, you can jump in here it'll have screenshots and or a video, um, et cetera. So self-help, that is the question mark in the upper right-hand corner. <clears throat> if you wanna to talk to one of our great support team, you can click here and send a message and they'll get back to you as soon as they can with an answer. And of course, uh, Alessia already explained the, the, the email that, that you can use as well, which is team at artworkarchive.com. We also, for those of you that don't know, have a blog that's been around for over 10 years, providing tips, tricks, best practices, interviews with industry professionals, um, you know, for artists, collectors, institutions, et cetera. So for those of you not familiar with the blog, it has an absolute wealth of information and I recommend checking it out. We also do some, you know, guides and other things that, that you can find on the resources. Um, if I check, click on guides, when we're putting out guides, we try to get them up here as quickly as possible. Um, these are also really handy resources for ongoing education. You will also see that there's a call for entry page that if you want to see some opportunities that exist out there, residency programs, grants, competitions, etc. cetera. Uh, and, you know, before I wrap up, thanks everyone for, for taking the time to learn more about this and, and being with us on kind of our maiden voyage of, of Thrive. <laughs> um, it was a little discombobulated. We'll, we'll continue to tighten it up and make sure we keep it you know, on subject so everyone gets the value that they came for out of it. And don't hesitate to email us if you have recommendations for topics you want to hear about in the future. You know, It sounds like legal the topic of legal documents and you know documents we have within the system are definitely a popular topic um, so i'll bring that up to the team but yeah we're always open to suggestions we want to make sure that this helps you get the most out of the system um, because there's just so many things in here that as intuitive as we try to make it uh, oftentimes it helps to have you know either a little refresher or an introduction to a new feature that we have in the system yeah, and I just want to uh, to jump in and say thank you to everyone who has attended. You know, it, uh, the chat is is flooded with uh, thanks from everyone attending. So thank you for taking the time. Um, and we would love to hear, you know, if there's any uh, tool or feature within Artwork Archive that you're still curious about, or if there's any part of your business that you're wrapping your mind around and you would like some expertise and assistance with, um, you can contact us uh, via the chat or again, team, um, as we plan out our future sessions, because um, we really enjoy doing this too, because there's so many great parts of Artwork Archive that we want to share out. Okay. Well, thanks again, everyone. Have a wonderful day, the rest of your day, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the future.